Hello my dear students. Today we will discuss the lesson 1 from your 7th standard science textbook that is nutrition in plants. So it is the first lesson from your science textbook. So in this chapter, you need to learn about nutrition, then nutrients, then type of nutrition that is autotrophic nutrition you need to learn, then heterotrophic nutrition you need to learn. So in this heterotrophic, you need to learn about saprotrophic, parasitic, then symbiotic, then insectivorous, so on. Okay, so let us discuss deeply about this chapter. So in this chapter, we will learn about nutrients first. So what is nutrients? So in 6th standard, you have learned that nutrients are like uh, carbohydrates, proteins, fat, then vitamins, minerals are included in the nutrients, right? So these nutrients help us to repair our body. Also, it helps for the body building. Also, it gives us energy, right? So let us discuss more about the nutrients. So nutrients, what are nutrients? In 6th standard you have learned that it is carbohydrate. Then it, it is protein, fat, vitamins and uh, minerals. So these are the important nutrients that should be present in our body and in 6th standard you have learned that what are the diseases or what are the uh, advent disadvantages which occurs due to the lack of these nutrients, right? So what are the functions of these nutrients? It helps to give us energy then it helps to build our body, that means body building. Then it helps for repair the damages. Repair the damages. Okay, so nutrients which are very essential for our body, that nutrients can be called that carbohydrate, protein, fat, vitamins, minerals can be called as the nutrients and what are the functions of these nutrients it helps to repair the body uh, damages that cause your body and also it helps to give us energy and also it helps to body building right and this and all you have learned deeply in the sixth standard now we will move on to the next topic that is nutrition what is nutrition what is nutrition Nutrition is the mode of taking food by the living organism. So, nutrition is the mode of taking food by the living organism. So, we can write definition as mode of taking food by living organism. So this nutrition can be divided on the basis of this mode of taking food by the living organism into autotrophic and heterotrophic, autotrophic and heterotrophic nutrition. So nutrition is the mode of taking food by the living organism and based on their mode of taking food 
it is divided into two that is autotrophic nutrition and the heterotrophic nutrition so here auto means self and trophos means nourishment okay so autotrophic nutrition means self nourishment whereas heterotrophy here heteros means a uh, other okay and uh, trophos means a uh, uh, nourishment so here for the nourishment they depend upon the others okay for the food this living organism depends upon the others that type of nutrition is known as heterotrophic nutrition so let us discuss more about what is this autotrophic nutrition and the heterotrophic nutrition so autotrophic nutrition means it is the self nourishment right so the plants can be called as the autotrophic nutrition so plants make food by using simple substances like carbon dioxide water etc to make the food so where it is happening so in the case of plants the preparation of the food is happening inside the leaves okay so that process is called a photosynthesis what it is photo synthesis or we can say it as making of food making of food in the leaves of plants that is known as photosynthesis okay so plants called autotrophic because they prepare their own food they make their own food and that process is called a photosynthesis here photo means light and synthesis means to combine so here the light or the sunlight okay the ultimate source of energy that sunlight is used up by the plants for production of food in their leaves so let us discuss what is happening in this process so the simple materials that they needed to make the food is is that carbon dioxide so we can simply write it as co2 okay c o2 and we can write another uh, another simple substance is that water water we can write h2o okay so co2 and h2o instead of this they require sunlight and they need a special structure for this process that is known as chlorophyll okay so with the help of carbon dioxide and water and by the presence of sunlight they produce the food plus we know that they will make a waste substance that is known as oxygen so which we are used up as the respiring gas okay so let us discuss what is happening here so first we will discuss how the carbon dioxide is reaching in their leaves okay so there is one uh, small opening present on their leaves that is known as tomato okay they are the small pores that present on the leaves which helps to absorb the carbon dioxide and oxygen okay they helps to absorb carbon dioxide and the oxygen as well as this helps to remove the carbon dioxide and oxygen formed in their body okay so this tomato are protected by a cell that is known as god cell that we will discuss later so now you just understand that in the plants they get the carbon dioxide for the process of this photosynthesis through their stomata and this stomata are protected by the god cell okay and here water how the water reaching 
in their leaves. So water should be absorbed from the soil. Right. So it is absorbed from the soil by the help of root. Okay. So water absorbed from the soil with the help of root present in the plants. And from the root a continuous system, a vessel system is uh, going on that is known as xylem vessel that you will learn in the uh, coming chapter that is transportation. So now you just understand that in the plants a continuous vessel is there which helps the plants to transport the water into their leaves. Okay. So that is known as the xylem vessel. Okay. That is known as the xylem vessel. Okay. So water reach in their leaves and from there they will make the food. So sunlight, I told you that sunlight is very necessary for the process of photosynthesis, right? So the sunlight is absorbed by the chlorophyll that present in the leaves. So chlorophyll, uh, they has one uh, green, they has green pigment and this helps to absorb the sunlight. Okay, so sunlight is the ultimate source of energy that we know that the plants require the sunlight for the process of photosynthesis so photo means light and synthesis means to combine so to combine the carbon dioxide and water the plants require light so they will produce the food okay so that is happening in the photosynthesis process so let us discuss a small equation for the production of food in the plants so the equation for the photosynthesis that happening in plants is that Carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll makes carbohydrate plus oxygen carbohydrate plus oxygen so photosynthesis the sunlight is used up by the plants to combine this carbon dioxide and water for forming carbohydrate and during this process they will make and waste material that is known as oxygen so during photosynthesis the waste material formed here is the oxygen. Don't forget that it is the waste material that is formed during the photosynthesis. But like other living organisms, the plants also respire. So during respiration, they inhale the oxygen and exhale the carbon dioxide. So slight difference is there in the respiration and photosynthesis. So during photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is taken inside of the plant and it will exhale oxygen as the waste product whereas during the respiration carbon dioxide is exhaled and oxygen is inhaled okay don't forget about that and here later on the carbohydrate will change into starch okay so starch is also an carbohydrate so starch present in the leaves indicate that the process of photosynthesis has happened in that plant. Okay, so what we have discussed, photosynthesis is the process of making food by the plants in their leaves. They require carbon dioxide and uh, water to make this carbohydrate in the presence of sunlight and uh, chlorophyll. And the waste material that formed is oxygen. Okay, later on carbon carbohydrate will be changed or transformed it will be transported or the carbohydrate will be converted into starch okay so let us uh, discuss the photosynthesis process in a diagrammatic view so we require a sun we require a sun because we need to show the sunlight 
and uh, we require the soil and we require the uh, road okay and uh, we know we, we need a stem then we need leaf okay so it's a plant right so it's a plant so we need a leaf stem and a root so during this photosynthesis sunlight will be absorbed by the leaves and carbon dioxide will be absorbed by the leaves by the stomata that present in the leaves then water will be absorbed by the root and it will be given into the leaves through the vessel that is known as xylem vessel and they will give out oxygen through their stomata as the waste material and during this process they make carbo hydrate so it is very important uh, you can draw this into your notebook okay so what is photosynthesis photosynthesis is the process of making food by the plants in their leaves that's why these plants are called a uh, autotrophic that auto means self and trophos means a uh, nourishment so using simple substances they make their own food so photosynthesis can be taken place in leaves or in any other green part such as if a green stem is there it can be occurred in the green colored that uh, stem part also in the green colored branches okay so photosynthesis beside the leaves it can takes place in the green colored stem as well as in the branches leaves other than uh, green in color like a uh, you can see that uh, leaves of yellow colored plants leaves of orange colored and there are different type of leaves or different type of plants with different colors right you can observe such kind of plants so in these kind of plants photosynthesis is happening do you know why because there's a reason behind of this process that means uh, in this kind of plants their chlorophyll that their green pigment will be masked by other pigments that present inside that plant body or it may be masked by the uh, color of orange or it can be masked by the color of yellow so chlorophyll is present that means green pigment is present but other colors are more in such kind of plants so photosynthesis will happen in that kind of plants but they are not in green color because their green pigment are masked by other colors okay so you can see uh, one uh, slimy like a uh, slime like that uh, green patches over the snagnet water and all so that is known as algae so these algae are uh, they, these algae contain chlorophyll so they, they are able to produce their own food okay so they are able to do the process called photosynthesis because they has the green pigment that is they has the chlorophyll in their body so they can prepare their own food we will discuss about the another type of nutrition that is known as heterotrophic nutrition so in heterotrophic nutrition i told you earlier that you need to learn about parasitic nutrition then you need to learn about saprotrophic nutrition then you need to learn about insectivorous plants then you need to learn about symbiotic association symbiotic association in this heterotrophic nutrition okay so first we will discuss about parasitic nutrition 
So parasitic nutrition means one plant depend upon depend upon another for ready made food. Okay. So that is known as parasitic nutrition. Okay. So or I told you in the beginning of the lesson that hetero means others. Okay. Trophos means uh, nourishment. For the nourishment, this living organism depends upon the other. So in this chapter, we are saying about the nutrition in plants. So obviously, we were saying about the plants. Okay. So in heterotrophic nutrition, first we are going to discuss about the parasitic nutrition. That means one plant depends upon another plant for ready-made food because they are not able to why they are depending upon another because they are not able to do the process called photosynthesis so you know that what is photosynthesis right so photosynthesis means it is the making of food in the leaves of plants. So in some kind of plants it is not possible. That's why they are depending upon others for ready made food. So the plants which grow on another plant that is known as parasite. And this parasite absorb all the valuable nutrient from the organism which they depend so that depending organism or depending plant is known as host okay so here the parasite depend on the host plant okay understood so the parasitic nutrition means uh, here the parasite or this parasitic plant depend on host organism because they are not able to produce the food from their leaves because of some certain reasons are there for each kind of uh, plants that uh, they are not uh, preparing this food at all okay so here they are not able to do the process called photosynthesis because of certain reasons okay so they depend upon another plant for the nutrition okay so that type of nutrition is known as parasitic nutrition okay so an example I can say that cascuta is an example for parasitic nutrition. Now let us discuss about the insectivorous plant. So insectivorous plants means plants which eat the animals. Okay, so they eat these insectivorous plants, eat insects for getting minerals. Okay, so let us go deep into that. So in this type of plants, their leaves are modified into a structure that is called a picture. Okay, so modified leaf that is known as picture okay modified leaf structure is called a picture okay so this picture that means in the apex of the leaf they has a lid which can open and close the picture okay so when an insect come and sit on the picture what happens that lid closes Okay, so when the lid close, then inside the picture, they has lots of hairs that facing downwards. So these insect get entangled in the hairs. Okay, so then they will they have some uh, digestive juice inside their uh, structure, and that digestive juice helps to digest the insect. And by doing this, they get the enough minerals for the process of photosynthesis. Okay, so here. They depend upon insect to get minerals. Okay. 
and they are able to produce food by their own that means they can take participate in the process of photosynthesis for getting minerals they digest the insect or they depend upon the insect for getting these minerals okay so that is all about the insectivorous plants okay so pitcher plant is an example for insectivorous plants okay example we can write that is picture plant is an example for insectivorous plant okay now let us discuss about the saprotrophic nutrition okay saprotrophic nutrition means uh, Here we can write the examples like fungi and mushrooms can be written as the example for saprotrophic nutrition and saprotrophic nutrition means uh, the organism which depend upon the dead and decayed matter is known as saprotrophic nutrition. So these organisms like fungi and mushrooms depends upon the dead and decayed matter for getting the nourishment. So that type of nutrition is known as the saprotrophic nutrition. So now let us discuss about what is symbiotic association? So symbiotic association means uh, it can be seen between a fungi and a algae. Okay, so let us discuss what is symbiotic association. So symbiotic association means it is the close relationship among two living organisms. Here Example, we can write the close association between fungi and the algae. So, here I told you that algae are photosynthetically active, right? They are photosynthetically active, whereas fungi are saprotrophic, right? So, they are not able to produce food by themselves. So, they are included in heterotroph. Whereas, here the algae can be called as autotrophs. So, their association, that means algae provide food for fungi. Whereas, fungi provide water and minerals for algae okay so fungi provide food for algae sorry fungi provide water and minerals for algae and algae in return give food for Fungi. So, this their close relationship is known to be lichens. Okay, it is known as lichens. So, their symbiotic association, the symbiotic association between fungi and algae is known as lichens. Okay, don't forget that here the fungi provide water and minerals to the algae. Here, algae are autotrophic, so they can prepare their own food and they prepare the food and give the food to the and they share the food to the fungi. So, that a kind of sharing is happening here. So, that type of symbiotic association between algae and fungi that we can call it as lichen. Let's uh, wind up that uh, heterotrophic nutrition. That means heterotrophic nutrition means. The organism which depend upon other organism for the nourishment. And in heterotrophic nutrition, you need to learn about parasitic nutrition. 
then insectivorous plants you need to know then saprotrophic nutrition and the symbiotic association between certain organism okay so parasitic nutrition means they are not able to produce the food by their own so they depend upon the other plants and that kind of plants are known as parasite and the plants which this parasite depend that is known as host organism and this parasite will absorb all the valuable nutrients from the host organism sometimes it destroy that whole plant or maybe partially it destroy the plant okay which they depend and in an example i told you that uh, cascuta is an example for parasitic nutrition okay then we have discussed about the insectivorous plants and insectivorous plants means uh, one example i told you that pitcher plant right that pitcher plant what is the special structure present in their leaves that modified leaf structure is known as pitcher and that uh, leaf apex we can see a lid which can close and opens uh, the pitcher and when the insect uh, sit on the pitcher what happens that lid closes and this insect get entangled in the hairs that present in the pitcher their hairs are facing downwards and what happens inside that pitcher they have some digestive juice it helps to digest the insect by the digestion they get the enough amount of minerals and i told you that the pitcher plant are able to produce food by their own so but they are, they are not able to get some amount of minerals so they depend upon insect for minerals okay so by this they prepare the food in their leaves by getting these minerals from the insects and all okay so that is all about the insectivorous plants and then we have discussed about the saprotrophic nutrition and saprotrophic nutrition we have given examples like fungi and mushrooms like so you have seen that fungi that growing on the uh, wet areas right so they are able to produce in number when their condition then when their atmosphere uh, when their living conditions are appropriate okay so what happens here is that they depend upon the dead and the decayed matter so they will produce a digestive juice so the digestive juice helps to produce a solution from this uh, dead and decayed organism and from that solution they will absorb the nutrients so this kind of uh, taking nutrients in the solution form from the dead and decayed matter that is known as saprotrophic nutrition okay then we had discussed about the symbiotic association that symbiotic association one example i told you that lichens right that fungi and algae one chlorophyll partner will be there and uh, fungi which are not uh, able to produce their own food they depend upon others for food so their close association is known as a symbiotic association here fungi provide shelter water and minerals to the algae and i told you that algae has a chlorophyll content so they are able to prepare their own food and when they get water and minerals from the fungi they produce the food by the process called photosynthesis and what happens here they gives the nutrients to the fungi okay so that kind of uh, uh, living together like uh, sharing sharing the shelter water and minerals between two organisms that type of uh, association is known as symbiotic association okay so that's all about that heterotrophic nutrition now we will move on to how the so nutrients how the nutrients are replenished in the soil so how the nutrients are replenished in the soil how the nutrients are replenished in the soil so i told you that the plants required lots of minerals for their body building right so in that nitrogen is very essential so plants require lots of minerals like potassium phosphorus nitrogen etc so nitrogen is very essential okay so when uh, if you are taking a field so when a 
crop is grown, what happens? They will absorb all the nutrients that required for the development of that particular plant, right? So that soil become deficient in the nutrients or deficient in the case of minerals. So what happens? Farmers add a manures or fertilizers. Okay, farmers add manure and fertilizers for the enrichment of nutrients in the soil. And another method is that I told you that nitrogen is very essential for the body building or for making the protein in the plant's body. So what happens here? In atmosphere, nitrogen is um, nitrogen amount is very high, right? But the plants cannot absorb this nitrogen directly from the atmosphere. Okay, so what happens here? A special bacteria are there that is known as rhizobium. Okay, rhizobium bacteria are present in leguminous plants. In the leguminous plants helps to absorb the atmospheric nitrogen, atmospheric nitrogen and convert into nitrogen compounds. Okay, so this can be easily absorbed by the plants. So they lives in the legumes, they lives in the legumes of these leguminous plants, one example I can say that pea. Okay, pea plant is an example for leguminous plants. So these kind of bacteria lives in the nodule of these plants and they helps to convert the atmospheric nitrogen into its nitrogen compounds and which these nitrogen compounds can be easily absorbed by the plants through their roots. So here these plants provide the shelter for these bacteria. Okay, so like this, the nitrogen is, a nitrogen and other kind of nutrients are replenished in the soil. So that's all about this chapter. And in this chapter, we have learned about the autotrophic nutrition, heterotrophic nutrition. We have learned what is nutrients and what is nutrition. And we have learned what are the simple materials uh, and the how the process is happening inside the leaves and we have uh, discussed different kind of heterotrophic nutrition we know that uh, the insectivorous plant is an half heterotroph because they depend upon the insect to get the minerals right so and we have learned about the symbiotic association between fungi and algae and we have learned about the saprotrophic nutrition and last we have learned uh, how the nutrients uh, are replenished again in the soil right so that's all about this chapter and we will meet in the next class with an another chapter then up to that thank you